Hi, and welcome back to X's and O's with Dan Orlaski. I'm Mike O'Hara, and once again brought to you by the good people of Xfinity. And Dan Orlaski, the Detroit Lions are going to Minnesota, but they're fresh off a loss on Thanksgiving Day to the Chicago Bears. And then Monday night, the Vikings lose. Really an entertaining football game on the road to the Seattle Seahawks. Overall, before we get to the X's and O's, when you look at what the Minnesota Vikings are doing, and we know they took some injuries that Monday night game, what do you see as the biggest challenges for the Detroit Lions facing a team that beat them just two months ago? Well, I would say Minnesota is the best combination of run to play action pass team in the NFL. And if they get their run going relatively successful and they can continue to kind of dictate the football game, it's hard on the defense because they do the best job of running the football and then coming back with a play action pass immediately following it, it's a big time challenge for a defense. Well, we'll see a lot of that, but you know, Dan, they only had 78 yards rushing. Was that part last night against, or Monday night, I should say, against Seattle, is that part of the injury to Cook that, that, or just the way the game dictated itself? It's just the way the game dictated. You have to give Seattle credit. Seattle did a really good job of kind of condensing or, or muddying the box and shutting down that run. Madison's a really good backup tailback for them as well, but making them, you know, people call it one dimensional, but I call it like getting the Vikings to play drop back football and beat you with their secondary choice is the best way to slow them down and beat them. Let's going to start here in the first quarter now. And Stefan Diggs, really a productive receiver, but a guy who can do an awful lot of things. Give us the X's and O's, break it down. Tell us what you see on this 27 yard gain. Well, especially in short yardage situations, he's somebody that is one of those, we got to get the football to him. So they start him on one side of the formation, bring him across on another side of the formation to kind of get you to set your defense. And then what they do is they got some tight ends that are willing to block, Mike. And, and Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph are really good blockers out on the perimeter. You see the arc releases or the outside releases by those tight ends. So you see set the formation, bring the jet sweep in motion, then those tight ends as the right tackle steps down, it leaves the defensive end out in limbo, in limbo because he saw that tackle step down. His job is to follow. And then those tight ends arc release, outside release, and get blocking on the perimeter. And you get a guy like Stephon Diggs. Remember, not just the receiver, this guy. He's a get-the-ball-in-his-hands type of player. And so they'll do it in multiple ways, especially on third and short situations. If Dalvin Cook doesn't play, I'd see it even more. I, I actually thought they would do something like this on the fourth down call la uh, on Monday night. But really just a good design by them of forcing the defense to be an unblocked defender. He doesn't matter anymore. And we see this a little bit more in the NFL of getting guys out on the perimeter with some lead blockers out in a, in a handoff type of situation. Alexander Madison, the rookie, has got more than 400 yards rushing and almost five yards per carry. We're going to see him this on this screen pass in the third quarter. Give us the X's and O's, Dan. Break it down. Tell us what you see on this. Well, I've mentioned play action before, and everyone talks about the Minnesota Vikings. They go, we, we got to shut down the run, and we got to shut down the play action pass. Really, you got to shut down a third level, and that's the play action pass screen game. You got to think, like, as a defender, you think, Okay, here comes run. No, 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 it's play action pass. So you turn and run back to try and get an underneath those, those pass patterns that are going to be 15, 20 yards downfield to all those crossers. And then that vacates a massive void for this play action screen game. That's hard on a defense to kind of be in that constant conflict to step up for the run, drop back for the play action, and then I got to go back and step up for this play action pass. So it's really incumbent on this defensive line to have great feel for some of these screens, these linebackers that have really good vision of not turning your back, you making sure that you don't commit too much to go and stop that run where you have to panic drop and run to shut down some of those crossings. And then all of a sudden your back is to the football. So a uh, really a three level attack when it comes to them is shutting down the run, shutting down the play action, and then being very aware and observant of when the play action screen is gonna come. They love to do it on first down. They love to do it on second and short really for their offense. Okay, we're going to move along to the fourth quarter. And, Dan, I don't think the tight ends have hurt the Lions quite as much this year as they did in other years. But Kyle Rudolph is a player that you've got to watch. Break it down. Give us the X's and O's on this play. And this is a terrific throw by Kirk Cousins with under pressure. Gets it off just in time to get it to Kyle Rudolph. Yeah, it's good design to kind of go attack a, a cover three. They, they flop or hop the tailback from one side to the other. That's going to stress the flat area of the defense. That makes the linebacker expand with him. And then you get Kyle Rudolph kind of winning on a safety. Great job of flattening his route on this corner route and going up and making a catch. Again, the Vikings have some players. I mean, if we don't know if Thielen will be healthy. We've talked about Stephon Diggs. And then Kyle Rudolph. The challenge with Rudolph is he runs the corner route and the seam route the same way. Watch how he comes off with his stem here or his 
his release at the line of scrimmage. A little wide. You don't know as a defender if he's going to go down the seams at the top of the number or flatten off to the corner. And so he gains some leverage with his, with his route and then just really strong hands. Look at him go high point that ball and, and keep it away from the defender. It's going to be a big thing. Contested catches by the tight end Kyle Rudolph in this game. Those safeties and guys that are going to be kind of positioned to go and, 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 and cover him, punch that ball away. He holds the ball out with his catches. You got to try and punch that ball away because he doesn't bring it into his body. But really good route runner and strong hands by Kyle Rudolph. Yo, know, Dan, before we wrap it up here, what does it say about the Vikings offense that they lose Dalvin Cook during a game? They don't have Adam Thielen, and they still put up 30 points on a really good Seattle defense on the road. You know, people think that Kirk Cousins isn't a good player, and he is, and he's playing at a really high level, good football. So that's a big part of it. Their scheme is really good. It's friendly. And if they get their run game going, it's, a, it's, it's near impossible to slow it down. All right, Dan Orlowski, that's a wrap for this week. Lions at Vikings, 1 o'clock in the Twin Cities. You got it, bud.